welcome to my channel where I'm going to be playing mostly vintage games from my childhood along with maybe some new games thrown in. Today we are playing the first game in the Elder Scrolls series, Arena. This game came out when I was 13. Um, I got introduced to it because my dad was really big into buying computer role-playing games like uh, the, some of the Dungeons and Dragons games initially. And we had ended up with this one. So I have fond memories of it as a child. So we're gonna try playing it again. I am launching it from Steam where it is currently available for free. But you do need DOSBox to play it. But it's pretty self-explanatory. Um, the story starts out with Uriel Septum Seven, who we know from, El if you played Elder Scrolls Oblivion. Um, so it's the same emperor in his younger, younger years before the events of Oblivion. So if you played Oblivion, you kind of know that what happens to him. So that's kind of a spoiler for this game, but oh well. Let's take a look here at creating a character. And this will kind of tell us what's going on. Or I'm sorry, Uriel Septum 4. So, we all, that gave us a little bit of a background. Obviously, if you've played Oblivion, you know that Jigar Tharn doesn't get away with it, but this is basically how he gets saved, is you're the hero in this. Um, so you have the option of selecting a class or generating one. Um, generating is kind of interesting because it asks you a series of questions. Select, you can just pick from the list. So I think for this video I'm going to go with generate. So they're going to ask 10 questions and this just based on your answers decides what class would kind of fit you. Oh, we have to scroll from the top. So, animal dying. We can mercy kill it. Watch it dying. I honestly, you know, animal dying in a trap. I think I would just kill it. Just, I don't like it to suffer. But I, you know, the last one, you know, somebody, somebody probably needs to eat. So, let's go with A. Oh. And I think your parents are having a party. And your cousin is stealing a candlestick. But you know his family has suffered some recent financial hardship. You can clear your throat and tell him to put the candlestick back, reassuring him that your parents can help him. But he should not resort to stealing. Um, basically let him steal. Your family could live without the candlestick, but your, his family can't. And treat him like a burglar because it's your father's candlestick. You know what? I'm going to go with A. I, I want to help my family. I don't want to, you know, I don't want to let him steal because even if my family doesn't need it, you know, I don't want my parents to worry about it. So we'll go with A. All right. 
One month after tales and tallows, you look at a hoard of treats you have collected and find a lot of brandied plums, a treat you dislike. You know, your sister likes them. Do you give her all your brandied plums? Trade the brandied plums for something she does not like, but you do. Pretend they are excellent and see if she will give up something good. I would go with B. Let's take off if she doesn't like something, and I do. And then she gets what she likes, and I get what I like. So, B. While in a marketplace, you witness a thief cut a purse from a noble, even as he does. So the noble notices and calls for city guards. In his haste to get away, the thief drops a purse near you. Surprise, no one seems to notice the bag of coins at your feet, do you? Pick up the bag and pocket it to help your family. I'm going to go with B, because didn't I say in the last question that my family was doing all right? I don't know that these questions are very inconsistent. B. Because you expressed interest, Arms Master Festal told you a few hints about recognizing magical weaponry. Later, you are practicing archery with a few friends. One boy who was never a strong archer has become something of a sharpshooter. You suddenly realize he is using magical arrows. Tell others about the arrows. In a friendly archery match, using magic arrows is cheating. Tell your friend you noticed he was using magical arrows, and if he doesn't get you some, you will tell the arms master. So, I guess that's me cheating too. Say nothing. After all, magic is... That contradicts A. You know, if it's cheating, I think I have a duty to let other people know. It's not fair. So, A. While fishing one afternoon, you find the boots which you discarded are full of ants who are busy making their way from a piece of bread you dropped to their ant hill. Pick up the boots and watch the ants off now, even though you are not leaving until dusk. Watch the ants, curious as to how they work so efficiently and content to let live and let live. Make boats out of leaves and send each ant down the stream. Well, that seems pointless. I mean, I would probably clean my boots off, but I'd probably wait till I got my fish. I'm going to go be. Your father delights in telling you stories of his travels in youth. And one memorable tale, he tells you about a primitive island he visited where a young child was sacrificed once a year to appease Arius, the god of fire. Why is he telling me this? Is it to threaten me? I don't get it. Whenever natives neglected the sacrifice, the island volcano would erupt, killing hundreds of villagers. You immediately tell your father, you do not believe in any such volcano god. Civilized man should intervene and find the natural cause behind the eruptions and stop the sacrifices. The god R.B. The god Arius must be evil. And C it is tragic, but the death of one small child is preferable. No! Oh! Wow. Yeah, I'm going with A. I don't believe in this horrible god. And why would my father have told... Uh, told me that. That's terrible. You are told that a young man has been caught by the village guards and accused of murder. Apparently his brother was killed by a group of four ruffians in a local tavern and in his grief the young man tracked each of them down and murdered them. Upon reflection you believe that A. He was honorable in avenging his brother's death. They should let him free. B. Even as you sympathize with the young man, vigilante law cannot be tolerated if there is to be peace. C. The young man's only mistake was getting caught while exacting vengeance. For that, he must accept whatever fate has in store for him. I'm like a with B. You know, he killed four people. I, I mean, I get it, but he 
should have let the law deal with it. Your father sent you on a task you loathe, cleaning the stables. On the way there, pitchfork in hand, you run into a friend from a homestead near your own. He offers to do it for you in return for a future favor of his choosing. Do you decline his offer, knowing your father expects you to do the work and it is better to not be in debt? Accept his offer, reasoning that... As long as the stables are cleaned, it matters not who does the cleaning. Ask him to help you, knowing that two people can do the job faster than one and agree to help him with one task of his choosing in the f future. You know, I kind of like C. A boat you are in is suddenly caught in a tremendous whirlpool. As the current reaches an impossible velocity, the little boat begins springing leaks and starts to sink under the vortex. You can see why no, you can see no way out that does not promise death. So you pick up a bucket and begin bailing furiously, hoping to keep the boat afloat for a few more seconds. Sit back and accept your fate, choosing to die with a sense of decorum and nobility, not as a comet or a fierce unknown. Dive into the churning current. You may be hastening your own death, but at least you are doing something. I'm going to go with A. I don't want to just dive in, but I don't want to just sit either. Let's see. Oh, Battle Mage. And you know, Battle Mage is probably what I would have picked had I done a custom class select, because it's one of my favorites in this game. So, yes. And let's go for a name. Hmm. Let me think. I'm going to go for just Elizabeth. It's my daughter's name. It's kind of got a medieval feel to it. All right. You know, I always like to be from Skyrim, even when I'm playing Skyrim. You cannot be from the Imperial Province. Basically, Rhea Silmaine tells you you can't, well, you'll meet her soon, but you can't select the Imperial Province, which we'll find out why soon. So, now it talks about, just a little bit about the lore of the Nords and Skyrim. All right. And let thy fate be written in the Elder Scrolls. Now I get to customize myself. Um, I like to kind of, th and these points were randomly generated. So I like to divide them up a little. Try to make myself balanced. just boost the lowest points first and I'll get that extra point to intelligence because I think that helps a battle mage out. All right, now we can customize our ex appearance, which I say that lightly because in this game it's basically just your head. You can change this later as you get armor and clothing in the game. Mm. I don't really like any of these faces. Oh. Alright. Now Rhea Silmaine's going to talk.
You can skip this, but we'll listen. I think she's almost done. Yeah, as all Elder Scrolls games, we are starting out in prison. Your eyes go to Strange Ruby. Ugh. You have found a Ruby key. All right, I'm going to save because I tried to play this earlier and the combat was wonky. You can have multiple save files. There is music in here. Of course, I she told me to equip whatever I, or I should equip what I have here, which all I get is a dagger at the beginning. That key just lets me out. Okay. So our instructions are go west and south. Now this is a random pile of treasure. Because when I tried it earlier and died, all I got was gold. But now I get a belt, so which doesn't. I guess the belt doesn't show, but. I will say my main advice for this is to save frequently. Because sometimes the game bugs out a little in DOSBox. It says it's safe to rest, but it's not always. And this time I did a little better than when I try. Oh, a buckler. Can I equip that? Yes. Yay. Now let's see if it actually is safe to rest. It says it's safe to rest. But not always. So at the beginning, you before you get better equipment, You'll find yourself saving a lot. Now my daughter wants me to plug her YouTube channel. I'll link that in the comments later for her or in the description. It was her first day of school today. And my son's it was her first day of second grade. His first day of eighth. 
afraid. It was kind of nice for me because I work from home and it was a little peaceful. I think, oh, I think I have to go through the door. And most of the monsters in here are rats, goblins. Of course, things get crazy later. Oh, where is it? Nothing's in here. You can travel in the water. This dungeon isn't hard compared to some of the dungeons in here. Red eyes seem to glitter. Oh no. You will find yourself resting a lot. 30 gold. Yay. Gold will come in handy once you leave. Not so much right now, and I don't know, I think I might need to go west a little further. Oh, that takes me north though. I mean, it is well mapped, so you can at least watch where you're going. Because hmm. you do have a map. Yeah, I think I needed to go in that water. And I don't think you can rest in water. I think you have to be on the ground. And sometimes the water is the best way to get places. Sometimes it's not. Here is a nice room of treasure. I feel like that's a monster, but I don't see it anywhere. Kite shield, plate helm, katana longsword. I don't know which things fit and which don't. So I can't use a kite shield. I can though. Let me. Plus seven. Doesn't seem like that changes my attack any. But I can put a helmet on. Oh, I can't. No. Well, I can't use much of that, but I can save it, sell it, right? You can actually write on the map. Um, and this, it doesn't matter so much in this initial dungeon, which is the Imperial Dungeon, which actually is the place in Oblivion you start out. It's the Imperial Dungeon. So that's kind of cool. Gold will come in handy um, once you can get into the towns a little. I 
I don't even see anything. Yes. It's kind of a dead end there. Hmm. All right. She would say to rest in those niches, but it really isn't. Not always, at least. So there were enemies nearby, but I haven't found anything yet. Swimming. Oh, here we go. No treasure. Mm. Red eyes seem to glitter from the darkness. Hmm. I think I'm near the exit. And more treasure. Nothing on him. I don't think this dungeon's terribly long, and it's really not hard. Uh oh. I don't know what attacked me, but now I'm diseased. All right. That doesn't seem fair. I've gained a level. See if you get bonus points. So I'm gonna focus again on increasing what's low. And you know, you can focus on one skill I guess if you want but that's just how I like to do it now I'm level two I probably can't wear those either nope yeah so, so far nothing no no armor in here that I can equip due to my class mm. I guess I have to go north again. I don't think I can... I have to go west again. Oh! Which doesn't seem fair, because I kind of need to but uh, we are almost out so this is a very short dungeon very short and it will randomly take you to a town in your home province and I don't know if it's always night when you leave or that's just my uh, luck. So I'm in this town of Reich Corgate, and these aren't necessarily, I think, outside the capital cities. These are not necessarily towns you'll see in later games. But you will see some. So, what we're going to do here that's a weapon shop. 
During the day, you can ask townspeople where things are. But I don't know that I can rest because it is night. I need to find an inn. There's a well. These towns are kind of maze-like. But this is where it's good to... the. Editing the map feature is good because you can write if it's an inn or a weapon shop or whatever on there. I gotta find an inn. And these little when you see a building on the map with um, a square in front of the red, the red is a door, but the square in front of the red usually means that's a store or an inn or the mages guild. And I'm not trying to type there. But night is not, not the best time to be about. That's a weapon store, so I'm gonna I'm just gonna write that on here. That way I don't, you know, wander by that. But looks like there's some other buildings this way. Let's see. Here is an inn and there's a temple. So I'm gonna write in. The unfortunate bird. Most of the ends are pretty, pretty similar, but I think I need, you know, a breast. Oh, a side quest. Well, I guess I could do that in the morning. And you can counter, but... Oh. You... And this is, you have to rest in an inn to get this far. So it looks like Rhea showed up in our dreams and she's given us our first step. And this is kind of where the plot of the game, you're finding the pieces of the Staff of Chaos. And you are going to be traveling across Tamriel to find them. Um, after you find each piece, she does appear in a dream. That's why the 
stay at the end is so critical. So, I guess that's it for this time. Um, next time, we will do our little side quest to get the package from the equipment store and bring it back to the unfortunate bird. So, we'll get that. We will go get take care of our cure disease. We'll sell some excess stuff and then we'll start our journey to find Fang Lair. Until next time, bye!